Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement, a channel devoted to sharing the craft of repairing, restoring, and modifying vintage electronic gear, and other random stuff. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief history of the Craig 404 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and show you how it operates inside and out. Craig machines were manufactured by Sanyo, and this one is very similar to the Sanyo MC1. This machine may look very familiar to you if you ever watched the 1960s Mission Impossible TV series. One of the machines used in Mission Impossible was the Craig 408, which is very similar to this one. This Craig 404 was manufactured in the early 1960s, just as the cassette tape format was beginning to take hold. Cassettes, of course, had the advantage of convenience, not having to thread the tape onto the reels and so on, but that's another story. With the machine now out of its case, let me show you the controls. On the front are an on-off switch, which disables power, a rewind and forward, or play switch, and a volume control. This machine does not do fast forward. On the left-hand side are a pair of jacks for a 1960s microphone an earphone jack, and a play record switch. The double microphone jack made it possible to pause and start recording from a switch mounted on a suitable microphone. On the right, there is a case hinge, and on the rear, there is nothing at all. On the bottom, you'll find a small speaker and the battery compartment. Opening the cover reveals the two reels of tape and threading instructions. You will also notice a tape speed control at the top, because with this kind of machine, the tape speed is not constant. More on that later. Removing the battery cover reveals a compartment for four AA pen light batteries. You might expect that the four batteries are wired in series for 6 volts, but that's only half the story. This machine has a positive ground, common with machines built around PNP transistors. But the four batteries are wired to produce a 3 volt supply for the motor when it's playing or recording, and a 6 volt supply to power the motor when it's rewinding, and also supply the audio circuitry. For this reason, if you put in the right two batteries, the machine will partially work, but of course without sound. It also means that the right two batteries will discharge more quickly. Most tape recorders use a spinning pin called a capstan and a rubber wheel called a pinch roller to pull the tape along at a constant speed. This means that no matter where the tape is on the reel, it is always going at a constant speed, usually 1 and 7 eighths, 3 and 3 quarters, or 7 and a half inches per second. The tape is kept taut by a mechanism to turn the tape up reel with minimal torque. This approach gives excellent audio quality, but with added complexity and therefore added expense. This is called capstan drive. This machine uses a simpler and unfortunately inferior approach. It pushes the motor spindle directly onto the rim of the tape reel for play or record, or directly onto the rim of the supply reel for rewind. The reel moves at a constant speed, but the tape does not. Tape speed depends on how full the reel is. This results in much lower audio quality and the frequent need to adjust the tape speed. This is called rim drive, and it's common in cheaper machines. Let's look at the play rewind switch. In addition to connecting the motor to the 3 volt supply in forward or the 6 volt supply in reverse, it has a mechanical linkage that tilts the motor and its spindle one way or the other to contact either the take up reel or the supply reel. The motor spindle is moving only a few millimeters one way or the other. 
There is another linkage to apply or release pressure between the tape and the tape head so that the tape can run more freely and quietly in rewind mode. Similarly, the record play switch connects the head either as an input for play mode or as an output for record mode, but also has a mechanical linkage. In record mode, this linkage swivels a magnet into the tape path on the tape guide to erase the tape as it runs over the guide. The audio is managed by a four transistor circuit on a small printed circuit board mounted in the corner. It uses four Japanese type 2SB187 PNP transistors. And while they do include a schematic with the instruction manual, it's clear that someone forgot to finish off their work because it doesn't show the wiring of the record playhead or the connections to the motor. Switch it on. It's in play. Test. 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 Let's listen. It hardly worked. The microphone isn't very sensitive. You literally have to yell into the microphone. Fortunately, there's an app for that. As a tape recorder, the Craig 404 was and is very limited. Even in the 1960s, there were reel-to-reel -reel machines that did a much better job of recording and playing back. It wasn't long after this machine came out that inexpensive cassette machines could beat it in size and performance. Nevertheless, the Craig 404 and other rim drive tape recorders have one thing going for them. They sure are cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to Mr. Brown's Basement for more interesting and unusual videos.